Hello, welcome to Scott's Odyssey. Did you ever want to travel across the United States on an old highway, see what our grandparents and those before us used to see? Well, if you did, here's something that you would have probably stopped at to get a good cup of joe. Welcome to the coffee pot. See you in a minute. Welcome back. If you've watched my videos before, thank you for your patronage. And if you're new to Scott's Odyssey, welcome aboard. I hope you enjoy this story of the Bedford, Pennsylvania coffee pot. I'd like to politely request that you stop finding my channel by accident. By clicking subscribe, you'll see these videos when they're released and it will allow me to afford a cup of coffee and enjoy this while taking you out to the site. 107 years ago, the first transcontinental highway traversed the United States, going from Times Square in New York City to Lincoln Park in San Francisco. The name of this highway was, and for the most part still is, Lincoln Highway. Although the route number, Pennsylvania Route 1, has changed to mostly U.S. Route 30 and there have been a lot of reroutes and realignments along this formerly 3,389 mile long road. The history that went with it has remained along most of its former path. One of those locations was the 1927 commercially attractive building created by David Burton Kuntz, a simple service station owner and operator along the Lincoln Highway. Because the highway was typically used as a long haul driving path to get to the far west, there were certain amenities that were sought along the way. The most common was the vehicle service station where you could obtain gasoline, engine oil, a quick tune-up if needed, and a cup of coffee. This gave Kuntz the idea of making an 18 foot tall, 22 foot wide brick building that was covered and shaped with sheet metal in order to make it look like a large percolator coffee pot. Poetically and unimaginably enough, the location was called the coffee pot. Kuntz's service station gave you all the amenities sought at a service station, plus the ability to visit the actual coffee pot, which acted as a luncheonette serving sandwiches and, well, coffee. Over time and as driving habits of Americans changed, so did the purpose of this coffee pot. It went from an eye-catching attraction to get you to pull in to a service station to later becoming a full-blown diner for you to bring your family to while you were traveling along the Lincoln Highway to wherever you were going. The addition of the diner eventually became a bus station, and at one point it was even a bar with a motel added in the back. This site it was once so popular that there were even little trinkets and merchandise you could purchase with the coffee pot on them, such as pens, t-shirts, postcards, matchbooks, and other novelty items. Even artist Kevin Cutts a painter of Old Lincoln Highway's novelty locations, made a painting of this site. Let me know in the comments below if you know of stories and locations such as this one of the coffee pot. My research is limited only by the information that people don't share openly. Help me break that barrier and let's share the history and culture of who we once were. Ultimately, as time does to sites such as this, Nobody longed for a building dressed up as a percolator, and in 1989, the coffee pot closed mainly because of a lack of business use with the rerouting of Lincoln Highway to US 30. The building sat vacant and in disrepair. It was to be condemned and demolished due to safety hazards in the late 1990s. In 2003, a cry out from public and a group of preservationists got together with the Bedford County Fair Association performed some dialogue with the local powers that be and ended up purchasing the coffee pot, but not the land on which it was located for $1. The Lincoln Highway Heritage Park Corridor and Attraction Preservation Group spent $80,000 to move the coffee pot across the road to the fairgrounds in the middle of North American blizzard of 2003, better known historically as the President's Day Storm Number no. Two. 
one of the worst and most renowned snowstorms that put Pennsylvania, along with DC and Boston, Massachusetts, into a formal state of emergency. The coffee pot got a new lease on life in 2004 when it was given a restoration and turned into a small memorabilia pseudo museum and gift shop, only open during the first two weeks of October for the Bedford Fall Festival at the fairgrounds. Perhaps if time permits, I can come back and give you a tour of the inside of this little percolator in October, but for now, we can oogle at it from the outside. For a time, this was not the only attraction of this nature along Lincoln Highway. Just a short piece down the road was another location of equal value and highly competitive to the coffee pot, and that was called the ship. Unfortunately, unlike the coffee pot, petty negotiations between preservationists and the physical owner of the property went back and forth regarding the financial value of such a site ending in the worst possible manner. In 2001, the ship burned to the ground due to an accidental fire where nobody got anything out of the deal, not the owner nor the preservationists. Perhaps that's why the coffee pot got lucky enough to get picked up when it did. The amount of effort for the reward of preserving such sites can often have quite a hefty price but none more costly than a total loss of that which reminds us of who we once were. I hope you enjoyed this story of the coffee pot in Bedford, Pennsylvania. Remember to click subscribe, give me a like, leave me a comment, and I'll see you on the next video.